Hey everyone, the HMO5 here, and today I'm bringing you my review of the Iron Banner gear. Now although I'm primarily a PvE player, I have been to the Lighthouse a few times in my day, and I do have a pretty solid understanding of what the best PvP perks in the game are. So before I get into the review, you might be thinking, with the Taken King right around the corner, it's probably not worth stocking up on any year one gear. Well keep in mind that in the Taken King, the Crucible will work the same way that it works now in that level scaling is not enabled. So in the same way that certain blue and green guns can actually be pretty solid in the Crucible right now, year one guns will still be pretty good going into year two. So moving on to the actual gear, the boots are terrible. Boots without heavy ammo are almost never useful and these boots are no exception. The helmets on the other hand are actually really solid. Intellect discipline is amazing and the perks are really strong. Although it does kind of come down to personal preference as to whether or not you prefer increased grenade throw distance and more super energy from grenade kills versus melee hits replenishing grenade energy and orbs restoring health, I would say that uh, the increased grenade throw distance and extra super from grenades is a bit stronger of a helmet since it is considerably less situational, but it does come down to personal preference. And moving on to the weapons, it has happened once again. Lord Saladin is selling Fell Winter's Lie, one of the most infamous guns in all of the Crucible. And the perks on this Fell Winter's are actually really, really good. It is not a perfect roll, but it's a solid 8.5 out of 10. So when it comes to ballistics, on this particular version of Fell Winter's, you're going to want to run Field Choke, as it's going to give you more range. Now with the absolute perfect roll on Fell Winter's, you would have Reinforced Barrel as your middle perk which would make aggressive ballistics better since with reinforced barrel you will hit the range cap for a shotgun. However without it, field choke will be better. You also have shot package which is just the best first perk on a shotgun. It reduces the spread of your projectiles and makes the range that you kill in one hit significantly further which you really need on fell winters uh, since its rate of fire is so slow. So moving on to the middle column. Uh, injection mold is terrible. It trades range for stability, and stability is just worthless on a slow rate of fire shotgun. The other two perks are okay. I would say that flared magwell is overall better than quick draw, since Felwinter's Lies reload is fairly slow. However, quick draw can be pretty good in certain situations. Moving on to the last perk, knee pads is absolutely amazing. Although the last perk on a shotgun can come down to personal preference, I would argue that knee pads is the best. Shotgun sliding is already a very strong uh, tactic in the Crucible, and knee pads almost doubles its power. This is why you will see so many top PvPers running knee pads on their shotgun. Overall, I would rate this Felwinter's 8.5 out of 10, and I would say that it's worth using as is. If you have a ton of moats and you don't mind using them this close to the Taken King, it is worth re-rolling to try to get Reinforced Barrel instead of Injection Mold, as that will increase the range a little bit more. However, it's probably worth saving those moats to get some goodies in the Taken King instead of re-rolling. Moving on to the final gun, Silver's Wrath is terrible. It's it's just terrible. Don't buy this gun. 7,000 Glamour, just no. Just, just no. No. It, no. And the final tip is... The Iron Wrath Bounty is a 10,000 XP bounty. It's one of only two bounties in the game that are worth more than 5,000 XP. And with the Taken King so close, I would say it's 100% worth saving this bounty at the end of the week. That way you can turn it in when the Taken King comes out and get some extra XP as opposed to saving only 5,000 XP bounties since I don't think we're going to get another Iron Banner before the Taken Kings launch. And that'll get you some sweet XP on day one to help push you to level 40. Another important thing to note is that the two emblems that Lord Saladin is currently selling are exclusive to year one. Although Iron Banner will return in year two, these two emblems will not. And this is the last Iron Banner before the launch of the Taken King. So definitely, if you haven't gotten these emblems already, grind them out and keep them, as this is our last chance to get them. So if you do find that Iron Banner salt slowly creeping in, you can take a break to check out the Destiny the Game Instagram, where today Bungie is revealing some sneak peeks at Year 2 exotics, and there are more to come. So far we've seen five new exotics revealed today on the Destiny Instagram, the first of which is an exotic titan helmet called the Empyrean Bellicose, and two perks have been shown on this helmet, the first of which is essentially Angel of Light, and the second of which is a new perk which will restore your melee energy 
with orbs assuming your super is already full. These perks so far are looking pretty weak. Angel of Light is not a strong perk in either PvP or PvE. It's possible this could change in the Taken King, but as of right now, this helmet is looking pretty weak. And restoring your melee energy with orbs honestly seems like more than a burden than a bonus, as when it comes to PvE or PvP, I often find myself leaving the orbs on the ground until I have used another super, that way I can get my super back much faster. I wouldn't want to use them to increase my melee ability since my super is much better. The second piece of armor revealed is an exotic warlock chest called the Alchemist Raiment, or Raiment, not good at pronouncing these things. And the perks on this chest are collecting primary ammo will give you a chance to gain glimmer, and another new perk, orbs collected when your super is full recharge your grenades and melee. This is also looking like a pretty weak exotic so far. While having an exotic to farm glimmer with is kind of neat, again, orbs being absorbed and not contributing to my super is something I don't want. Grenades and melee are good, but they're not as good as having a super, so for the same reasons that the Titan helmet doesn't seem to be too strong, this chest doesn't seem to be too strong uh, either, but at the very least we'll be able to glimmer farm with it. As for the exotic weapons, of the exotics revealed so far, this is by far the best, and that is the new shotgun called the Chaperone. The Chaperone fires a single slug shot and also grants an agility boost when equipped. Now what makes this so good is that all of the current shotguns in the game right now fire pellets. And the whole reason that you use the shot package perk is to try to turn the pellets into a single slug. That way, more of the bullets will hit the same target. But with this shotgun already having a single slug shot, it essentially comes with shot package built in. And if that wasn't enough, your precision kills will get a brief increase to handling, range, rate of fire, and stability. We've also seen footage of this thing in action in one of the Game Informer reveals, and it does have a pretty decent range. Definitely looking like it's going to be a very solid shotgun in the Taken King Crucible. The Telesto looks amazing, and although it's called the Telesto, I think people are going to call this one the Needler, as this fusion rifle will attach projectiles to your foes and detonate with a delayed void blast. And for the first time in Destiny, we have a perk that only triggers with multi-kills. Multi-kills this weapon will drop orbs for your allies. So if we have a multi-kill perk, it sounds like this is going to be a really strong fusion rifle. And although fusion rifles aren't used too much in the Crucible right now, they're actually really strong. So the Telesto might turn out to be a monster. You know, we'll see what its charge rate is, but I'm excited for this gun. The third armor piece is a pair of exotic gloves for the hunter called the Sealed Amkar Grasps. And these gloves will give you an additional melee charge and your melee damage will have a chance to reload your primary weapon. Now these gloves are pretty interesting. As in PvE, this is a pretty solid perk. Being able to go invisible twice and being able to melee an enemy to reload your primary is really nice. Uh, meleeing is generally something that you do as a last resort in PvE, so being able to reload your primary weapon really complements that well, and having double invisibility would be really nice. Remains to be seen whether or not this will be stronger than Don't Touch Me, but it's a pretty good exotic. As for PvP, this is kind of interesting. Having two backstabs will really make backstab a lot stronger, um, and reloading your primary could be pretty good. You'll be hard pressed to give up uh, recharging your grenade energy every time you die, but I think this will definitely see some use. So I wish you guys luck in your PvP, and remember, the Iron Banner offers much suffering, but equal reward. I will take them all. Guardians are fighting on Earth and beyond. Join them. Push back the darkness. Destiny the Taken King and the Complete Destiny Adventure in the Legendary Edition.